you want me to try and get some EVP? Mark changes places with Lane to get the best recording possible. Mr. Culbertson, would you care to talk to us right now? Mr. Culbertson, who's president? Mr. Culberson, what street did you live on in Gettysburg? Thanks for talking with us, Mr. Culberson. That's definitely getting something. Let's see what we got. I hear it over wow. the computer, but that's a lot of EVP. Thanks, Mr. Culbertson. <laughs> because the recording is so garbled, Mark decides to bring in the ghosts of Gettysburg tech guru, Scott Crownover. Can they decipher the cryptic sounds on the recording? Let's see what we can do. Give it a try? Yeah. All right, let's Mark and Scott upload the EVP onto Scott's laptop. Using a professional recording software, Scott attempts to clean up the sound by eliminating any background or ambient noise. I just boosted the gains, and let's see what we got. Johnson is the president. Johnson, yeah. I, I, I didn't get the last part, but I think, okay. I think you're right. Let me just take this up a little bit on the volume, and then I'll do some noise reduction. Let's wash it one more time. See what comes up. Johnson is president. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's it. That's great. Okay, so we have a date. As the president who served right after Lincoln, the eerie recording places the Phantom Culbertson in the right historical time period. That fits the post-Civil War. Right? Yeah. Now that, that would fit. Absolutely. But Mark still had no confirmation that a local Union soldier by the name of Culbertson ever existed. Digging deep into the historical records, a skeptical Mark makes a startling discovery. Come here, you gotta see this. Company K, 1st Pennsylvania Reserve, pan down here in the seas, and what do you have? James F. Culbertson. Just incredible. It just shows what having good medium there will do because they give you the clues, they give you people to try and communicate with using EVP. Was it simply an uncanny coincidence? Or had Lane truly given a voice to one of Gettysburg's silenced heroes? Coming up. A quaint inn may contain a deadly portal. Few places in America are haunted by the ghosts of the country's past, like Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. I would say that Gettysburg is one of the most haunted cities in America and possibly the world. And a quaint bed and breakfast off the beaten path might just be the Grand Central Station of Gettysburg's ghost world. I have one investigator who always says, if you could see this, you'd be saying, excuse me, every few feet. <laughs> I said, I'm glad I can't see it. Located on Hospital Road, the inn once served as a Union field hospital during day two of the battle. Field hospitals at the time of the Civil War, I mean, there was a lot of agony. There was a lot of human emotion just bursting forth. That may contribute to the lingering or residual energy here in the Balladary Inn. And while the Balladary Inn offers spectacular views of the countryside, it sometimes gives visitors a terrifying glimpse of life after death. We have a scrapbook. If somebody has a significant experience, we ask them to write up the story for us, and we put it in the scrapbook. In the five years that Suzanne has owned the inn, she's already collected dozens of stories and pictures of her guests' ghostly encounters. There's something called a portal, an access gate, and apparently we have a portal here. 
could this serene landscape truly house a gateway to a ghostly dimension? Suzanne says she's got the pictures to prove it. A frequent guest of ours was taking pictures, and she took a picture of a couple of people sitting on a couch in our great room. They looked at the picture. They thought they saw something in the background. It turned out to be two figures standing on the terrace outside looking in. Upon closer inspection, the figures appear to be Confederate soldiers, except one is wearing an unusual black armband. I was asked when I was shown the photograph, did any Confederate soldiers wear black armbands? At Gettysburg, many of them did because Stonewall Jackson had been wounded at Chancellorsville two months before Gettysburg and had died in May of 1863. A good number of the Confederate officers were wearing black armbands. But if historically the inn was a Union hospital, why are Confederate phantoms haunting the Baladary? The answer might lie where you least expect it. We had some of our guests go out with a psychic. They came back and told me about Confederate soldiers buried on the tennis court. That there were seven of them. Suzanne didn't believe the story until a different, independent psychic came up with the exact same details. Did the guest's photograph manage to give a face to two of those unsettled spirits? When I see that kind of thing, I'm amazed. You can explain it. Fog and ectoplasm and just, you know, whatever. But how do you explain people? The search to explain Gettysburg's alarming number of paranormal encounters has fetched a variety of answers. A friend of mine suggested that it could possibly be the large amount of quartz in the granite that's out there. All the energy that was expended out there was embedded in the quartz. Other explanations range from purgatory to quantum physics. Energy is never lost. It can never be lost. It just takes a different form. There's a vital spark that we all have within us, and it moves on to another plane. While some skeptics claim there's no sure proof of the paranormal in Gettysburg, Mark and the ghosts of Gettysburg team argue there's too much evidence to be ignored. Thousand stories, numerous photographs, 500 EVPs in just a short amount of time that I've been working on it. There's something here that's unexplainable. From its scenic fields to the phantoms of its violent past, Gettysburg and its legends will continue to haunt America's psyche. Gettysburg is part of the American existence. The energy here draws people, and maybe it's the people that come here looking for something that spark it. And for Mark and the ghosts of Gettysburg team, the search for answers will remain as steadfast as the spirits themselves. I'll probably be intrigued by this for the rest of my life. I mean, aren't we all? And as our lives get towards their end, don't we all want to know where we're headed and where we're going? I'd kind of like to see a little bit of a road map before I go there.